figure this out. A seven-year-old girl who's never given an exam, how can she help a 14-year-old boy in class ninth deal with tremendous amount of exam stress? My answer is claps. Lots and lots of claps. Doesn't make sense, right? You're clapping, but it... Let's try it out. I'll count one. You clap once. On the count of two, clap twice, and on the count of three, thrice. And just concentrate on the number I'm saying and balance the sound in the room so that it sounds like one sound and not fragments of it. Let's get started. One, two, two, one, two, three, two, 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 zero. No problem. Let's try that for you again. Zero. <laughs> Almost. One, two, two, one, zero. This activity that you just did is based on the life lesson of a seven-year-old girl who said to me, almost in this tone, concentration is the most important thing, but balance is above that. <laughs> this activity helped a 14-year-old boy prepare for his exams. No matter how silly or small that sounds, the life lesson of a seven-year-old girl had an impact on a 14-year-old boy she doesn't even know. What do I know? What is for you? shall not pass you by. Love, not because it's necessary, but because it's possible. When you're done using the jar, remember to close the lid. Never leaving home is not the same thing as coming back. Prioritize your time for the people you love. Oh, by the way, these are not quotes that I've downloaded from the internet or have forged from some high-end self-help book. These are life lessons of people like you and me. How do I have them? because I collect them. Yeah, just like some people collect stamps and tickets and coins and letters of ex-boyfriends and girlfriends. I collect life lessons. Now I must confess I was a weird child growing up. You know, I would ask people, what's the greatest piece of advice they can give me? And would make a note of it on the back pages of my notebook and on the margins of my dad's diary. I liked it so much that I asked everybody I could find, what's your life lesson? Even the guests who were invited home for dinner would not be spared. I would jump before the meal and say, you only get to eat if you tell me what your life lesson is. <laughs> Every time life slammed me down, questioned my beliefs, challenged my navigational skills, I went back and took refuge in those back pages and on those margins of the diaries. And trust me, these nuggets of advice, these life lessons helped me move on, forgive easily, be patient, whatever I needed at the time. So much so was I fascinated with the idea that if a handful of people in my humble setting of Berudun could help me resurface or get inspired in life, the population of the world is approximately 7.125 billion, which means there are 7.125 billion mistakes to learn from, 7.125 billion stories to get inspired from, 7.125 billion heartbreaks to associate with basically 7.125 billion life lessons available. The same belief, the same belief helps me drive this project, Project FUEL. FUEL stands for Forward the Understanding of Every Life Lesson. And what we do in Project FUEL is collect life lessons from all around the world and design them into interactive and performance-based exercises. So that someone just doesn't get to read or glance through somebody's life lesson, but actually experience it in a practical way. Now, I can tell you, for the longest time growing up, I would read people's life lessons, find a piece of advice, a word of comfort, a solution to the problem, but mostly skip through them because I did not know how to interpret or internalize them for myself until the day my counseling teacher back in class eight shared a gem of a life lesson with us, and she told us, talk to yourself and unclutter your mind. Now, at the time, with all my teenage hormones rising and mood swings, I really needed to talk to myself. So I sat all by myself uh, on the terrace of my house and on the window seat of my school bus and tried talking to myself. Failed miserably. So next day, I stormed inside the staff room and asked her, how does one do so? How do you talk to yourself? And she replied simply, write a letter to yourself, not as you, but as someone else. What would you say to Deepak Ramola if you weren't Deepak Ramola? 
that struck me like a bolt of lightning, an epiphany too hard to ignore. For the first time, I realized I didn't have to memorize somebody's life lesson. I actually could apply it and experience it for myself. I'd like to believe that's where the seeds of Project Fuel were sown. Now, the floodgates opened for me, and I started to collect more and more life lessons and using the tools of poetry, theater, creative writing, and performance art. I started being creative with them. Now, some life lessons are pretty easy to design, I can tell you. Some demand heavy research, and some we are still struggling with, like this one, where a 21-year-old girl told me, life has taught me to French kiss. I don't know how to manifest that. Or this one, where uh, you know, a 31-year-old Sri Radha Bhattacharya told me, put everything on an email. I think that's a pretty good life lesson for all you entrepreneurs. But any guesses about how I conveyed the life lesson of a 33-year-old woman traveling on a Delhi metro ride, which was, if your face can surprise you in the mirror every morning, you're still having a good life, to a girl in Punjab dealing with low self-esteem issues? Don't worry, I got this one. Using 300 pieces of mirrors. Take a look. These are not just a bunch of girls admiring themselves in the mirror. I have asked them to write 40 new things about their faces, using that mirror in precisely four minutes. What came out of this was one of them counting all her eyelashes, another all her lip folds, and one of them, for the first time, had the courage to smile without being conscious. This is the letter she wrote to me post this session. She writes, I was thinking my smile does not suit me, but after the session I found it looks awesome on my face. And she's smiling in some other part of the country as I speak here. <laughs> now, the, 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 the thing is that these life lessons are being designed, you know, based on the models of poetry or interactive art. There are many more, like this one, where I taught 800 students to keep moving and not get stuck, even if the music wasn't playing right in life. Or this one, where we learn to let it go using a drop of water on each palm for every student in the class. That was fun. Or this one, where we learned to, that each one of us can claim only the share we think we deserve. Or this one, where Hitler's face taught us that while we're looking, I don't think so, I can take you through all the 20,000 plus people I have taught. But I can tell you about this one boy who became courageous enough to tell his story after a friend of his leaned in to say, don't worry about what they say, own your story. That boy was me. That life lesson of to own my story gave me the courage and the encouragement to write my most vulnerable piece of spoken word till date, I have been an adult all my life. I've been an adult all my life. Trust me, I've never been a kid. How could I be when they shouted out bitter names in empty alleys and the class monitor wrote my name in expletives and in derogatory ways on the blackboard? It really takes an adult to explain to oneself that there are no bandages to fix heartbreak and pain. And there are no pills to subside the adversity of being mocked in classrooms, in corridors, in tuition classes, on the roads, everywhere you go. A kid would not know what to do with this. An adult would know. So every new session when I was stared at by spiders, I thought I could befriend or mosquitoes who I thought would not bite me. I told myself, you've been here umpteen number of times, get over it. Tears have been sent back and smiles have been summoned every now and then, every now and then, every now and then. I had to be strong when my best friend was no longer sitting with me as I returned back from the lunch break back in class 10th. The reason was clear, my voice was a problem. He did not want to be seen or heard with somebody who sounded like a kid or a girl, or a kid or girl both. He never told me who I exactly sound like, but I'll figure that out someday. But otherwise, otherwise I have eaten solid food, faked heavy voices, ladies and gentlemen. Did it work? You can ask, not really, you can see. And now I teach visually impaired children all across the country. And the funny part is that my students can't see me, they can only hear me. So any time I say something, someone in the class goes, Deepa, ma'am, I have a question. I ask myself, how does it matter how I sound? Given the fact that I can be heard loud and clear, loud and clear, loud and clear. How does it matter? 
given the fact that I can be heard loud and clear. So every time someone goes, ma'am, I lean back, bounce back and say, yes, how can I help you? You see, I've been an adult all my life. I've never been a kid. Thank you. And, and I kid you not, I kid you not, if not for that life lesson to own my story, I would have never written that piece, never had so much fun with it. The question you can ask is, don't we already have too much worldly wisdom packed in the best proverbs and statements and quotes and idioms available almost about everything? No matter how well a philosopher or a writer has put it, there is something so powerful and imperatively expedient when an 11-year-old Neha Praveen Kadam says, do your homework on time. Or a 100-year-old Mohini Sharma says, life has taught her to stay curious until her last breath. We lost her two weeks after she shared with me her life lesson of 100 years. After teaching people from age group four to 96, from each and every walk of life, I can tell you that I know this for sure, that each one of us has so much to learn and so much to teach, if only we have the courage to share the understanding of our lives with each other. Oh, by the way, that's not a grand selfie. We call it the group hug. The vision with Project Fuel is to set up Project Fuel communities and tribes all over the world that will allow people the space to learn from each other's mistakes, failures and success and circumstances. If you don't have the means to spread or illustrate your life lesson, send it to us so that we can pass it on through Project Fuel for you so that someone else can learn from your life. Who knows? Really? Who knows maybe you have cracked the code of how to get out of a failed relationship. You have invented or discovered a theory of how to be successful in a particular job prospect or an incredible solution to a problem that the rest of us are still struggling with. The point is, share your story as often as possible with as many people as possible and as many times as possible. Because the truth of the world is that each one of us really wants to know we are not the only one. Not the only one who don't like that mayo sauce in that burger, or not the only one who are extremely nervous to be speaking in front of so many people. Not the only one. Share your story so that someday someone will pass you by on the street and you will not even know that you, you, you are the reason why that person is happy, inspired, content, or simply alive. This, this is my life lesson. What's yours? Thank you. Thank you.